But alas, alas, Mr. Speaker, I wish that were true. And you'll recall I asked in the, in the estimates debate, why is it? Mr. Speaker. Why is it? If the Honorable Member would give way. Why is it, I ask, Mr. Speaker? If he doesn't give way, I'd just like to rise on a point of order, please. Point of order. A point of order, I'd like just the Honorable Member to clarify if he's suggesting that there's active TB at the Mental Health Rehabilitation Center, and if he has evidence that contradicts what was said by the Ministry of Health on that point. Honorable Parliamentary Representative West Kingston, you have an inquiry from the Minister of Health. Mr. Speaker? Do you have information to contradict what was indicated by the ministry, by the requisite ministry? All I say, Mr. Speaker, tarry a little. All you said was what? Tarry a little. I have started my presentation. I have started my presentation and I don't understand the interruption. Let me go back, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'd just like to reiterate my point. Is the Honorable Member saying that there's active tuberculosis at the Mental Health Rehabilitation Center? This is not a trifling point. Active tuberculosis is something that has great potential to have devastating effects on lives and it is contagious. I do not want us to take this this honor, the, the business we conduct in this honorable house for a joke, Mr. Speaker. If the honorable member cannot confirm active tuberculosis, the responsible thing for him to do is to withdraw that statement. Honorable member. Mr. Speaker, I continue along the path I started. No, 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 but, but Mr. He, Speaker, but hold on, hold on. I am saying to you, I have all the information I need, and I am continuing. And when it is ready, I will show the source of the information. No, but that's not the way it works. That's not the way it works. Um, here's the Minister of Health. Based on what you said, is asking you to confirm whether you are asserting that there's active TB in St. Vincent de Gradines. You You can say, Yes, I am conforming, and then proceed to conform. Now, you don't have to wait until you get down the road. Mr. Speaker, there is nothing so far that I have said. There is nothing so far that I have said that could give rise to that question. There is nothing. I said, allow me to continue my presentation. There's nothing in what I have said well. that leads to that. Oh, 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 sit, sit for a minute. Hon Honorable Minister of Health, what prompted you to ask the question that, the, to ask the, the parliamentary representative to confirm what he's saying? Because he's saying there's nothing that you have said. What, what, what? Uh, Mr. Speaker, the clear language of the Honourable Member for West Kingston is what prompted my query. He, is, he cast doubt on the press release or the statement which was made by the Ministry of Health, which indicated that there was no active That is what I heard too. So, that is what I heard too. And you went for that? We the statement. Mr. Speaker, you know, it's amazing. Honor, honor, honorable Parliamentary Representative West Kingston. No, ho hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on. This is rather simple. If you are saying, if you want, you can respond to the Honorable Minister by saying, if you got that impression, I wasn't imputing that. And in essence, they did no, I'm not saying that. But if you, as, if, 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 well, if, based on, I, I do my if based on, if based on what you said, if based on what you said, the Honorable Minister thought that you were implying that there were, were active TV cases in St. Vincent. And I must say to you that when you reference the statement from the Ministry of Health, that's where I thought you were going as well. And if at least two of us, the the, the minister directly responsible for health in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and the person directly responsible for conducting affairs in this house came to that conclusion. I think that you owe it to us to say, look, I'm not imputing that. And if you are imputing that and you have information to prove it, then I think you should say, yes, that is precisely what I'm imputing. And then let's see where you go with it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
But Mr. Speaker, I don't think you understood what I said. I understood you clearly. Well, let me remember. explain. I no, no, no. I, but yeah, I rose. No. no, I rose and I said I am continuing what I said. No, I, I was no, no, no. But you can't continue what you said because. Mr. Speaker, there is active tuberculosis in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Very well. There is. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the question is, I mean, there's tuberculosis in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The question is if the honorable member is saying that there's active tuberculosis at the Mental Health Rehabilitation Center. And that is what, he's in, that is what his statement indicated. The, does the honourable, could he, if the honourable member cannot confirm that, Mr. Speaker, I'm inviting him to withdraw his statement and imputation, which is the honourable thing for him to do. Honourable member, I ask you to respond directly to what the honourable minister of health has said. Mr. Speaker, I wonder if you will allow me to give you the information, or you're going to allow no, these interruptions. I said categorically, Mr. Mr. Speaker, that there is active tuberculosis in St. Vincent Grandies. I said that, and you would want me to go on and give you the proof, or you want him to continue to interrupt? No, but but remember, the honourable member is saying. Yeah, I heard him, Mr. Speaker. You're not no. allowing me to, to, to give him what No, but uh, please sit for a minute. The Honourable Member is saying that you precisely said, in fact, he conceded, he said, yes, there's, there's tuberculosis in St. Vincent. Um, but what, why is he interrupting me? Speaker, let's just remember one thing. He made a statement based on a statement issued by the Ministry of Health in relation to the Mental Health Rehabilitation Centre to see if he catch any fish at all. Speak to the point which is before the House. Now, may I proceed, no, Mr. Speaker? Yes, yes, no. Mr. Speaker, you recall when I... But why are you refusing to answer that question? I mean, this is... What is the question, Mr. Speaker? <laughs> yes, there is! Okay, so let's proceed. Yes, I said yes, there is! So let, let us, let us, let us, let us... No, 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 but... but Oh, please. Mr. Speaker. Oh, please. Oh, please. Shall I say it or should I? Well, I, I, I expect to proceed to establish what you're saying. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, it's not the first time in dealing with a health matter in this place, Mr. Speaker, that my reputation has been challenged. And it's amazing how they don't learn. They don't learn. Enough. The truth shall set you free. The truth will. Don't accuse me when you know differently. You ought to know differently. And I will show you why you ought to know differently. M Mr. Speaker, I'd like the honorable member to know that the reports that I have read indicate that there's no active tuberculosis at the Mental Health Rehabilitation Center. Sleeping is no excuse on the job. Sleeping is no excuse on the job. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, may I be permitted to, to say what I have to say on this matter? But I am hearing the... No, I, no I'm not the talking. Side. I'm talking about the frequent interruption. No, but he, he's... The other side. But don't you think he's interrupting you on a very important point, though? No, Mr. Speaker. He ought to know better if he's the Minister of Health. No, but I he... have the information, so he ought to have it. Mr. Speaker, I said that I find it more than passing strange that all of the people, patients and staff of the mental health institution would have been tested for tuberculosis quite recently. Because my, my, my research tells me, Mr. Speaker, that latent tuberculosis does not show any sign. And I asked in the presentation in the estimate for the minister to come clean and tell this country what is really happening at the mental health institution. I asked for it because my understanding is only when you have active tuberculosis that you start showing the signs. And it's when you start showing the signs you test people. Mr. Speaker. That's what happens. M Mr. Speaker, you if know, the honorable member would give way. Mr. Speaker, he doesn't learn. If the honorable he, member not would me. give way. He doesn't learn. Well, then could I persist with this point of order? Yes. 
the honorable I, I'm not I'm not clear on what the honorable member is saying. Is he saying? Right, that's fine. But are you saying? Because you didn't make this explicit statement. You said yes, there is. You didn't go further than that. Are you saying that there's active tuberculosis at the mental health rehabilitation center? And uh, are you suggesting that because persons are tested, that that is an indicator that there's active tuberculosis there? But he said a little bit more than that. He's, what, what is the additional thing that he added to it? The, 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 the little bit more, and I am, I am not a doctor, so I can't speak to that, mm -hmm. but what he did say is that his information, yes. his research tells him that if tuberculosis is latent, there, there, there's no, there are no symptoms of it. If it is active, then there are symptoms, and that may prompt a test. That is what I understand him to be saying. Well, Mr. Speaker, persons could be tested for tuberculosis with or without symptoms. The bottom line is, and I have seen the reports on this subject, Mr. Speaker, that there is no active tuberculosis at the Mental Health Rehabilitation Centre. Yes, there is latent tuberculosis, as has been established. We indicated that in the releases that have been made. Proceed, please. Mr. Speaker, you know, <laughs> if this matter weren't so deadly, it would be funny. Because when you have episodes of this kind, it is imperative that those who are at risk be given an opportunity to take the necessary precautions. My information tells me that when you've contracted this disease, you need at least six months of treatment, sometimes six months to a year, continuously. And what is more, that there's evidence that there's some strain which are resistant to the treatment. Mr. Speaker, I repeat, it is not every day that an institution decides to subject all of its employees and all of its patients to a test specifically for tuberculosis. Mr. Speaker, I have information which tells me that the staff of the mental health institution applied for and got time off because of their recent exposure to a patient who had active tuberculosis which patients have subsequently died. I'm also privy to information which says that sufficient, was not, sufficient precaution was not taken to have the necessary corrective measures. And Mr. Speaker, I ask the minister to come clean and tell this country what is happening at the mental health institution with respect to tuberculosis. That's all I ask for, because I keep saying when there are incidents in, in healthcare, when there are incidents in healthcare, it is not a matter of politics. Healthcare is about saving lives, and if you have a dangerous situation, tell the people what the problem is what steps they need to take. Mr. Speaker, I was in, in church two Sundays ago. Surprise you, eh? There's a lot you don't know anyhow. Mr. Speaker, there's a, a gentleman who is in and out of the mental health institution two Sundays ago. And he came and sat towards the back of the church, not far from me on the other side. And he started with this <laughs> for about five minutes. And for the next 20 minutes, Mr. Speaker, it was one of the worst cough continuously I've ever heard. I'm not a medical person, but my reading tells me what that signifies. And Mr. Speaker, I had to get up from my seat. There was a lady sitting two rows in front of him with a young child. I had to get up and urge her to go forward in the church to escape the cough, whatever the problem is with this person. 
I say that, Mr. Speaker. You do that even for a common cold and a flu. Anytime people are coughing, especially, and you see, Mr. Speaker, it is the young, the elderly, and those with, I remember you had to wrap it up, yeah? And those with things like HIV that are most exposed, most likely to be affected by this because of the suppressed immune deficiency. So, Mr. Speaker, healthcare is not for playing games. Tell the people what is wrong. Tell the people how they can help themselves. Tell them what steps you're taking to prevent the spread. That is all I'm asking for. Don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. I've heard that before. And you see, Mr. Speaker, it's interesting, perhaps when I was dealing with the Honorable Dr. Slater, the Minister of Health was perhaps somewhere trying to get his grades adjusted in court. That's why he missed what happened then. West Kingston, Mr. Speaker. West Kingston. I remember you all the time. May I just take a few minutes for my constituency, Mr. Speaker, as, as is the custom. You see, Mr. Speaker, the roads. Oh, but I give you time. I give everybody time. Uh, listen, why are we doing this? Everybody gets time. The truth. The truth. I have truth. given everybody time. That's right. That's right. Why, yes. are we, why are we making this into an issue? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Mr. Speaker, the folks in West Kingstown. Narrow politics wouldn't carry us very far. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Especially but the when, rules when the allowed leader... you to speak time and time again, Honorable Minister. The people in West Kingston, Mr. Speaker, are not going to expect much from this budget. I want the people in Rose Place in particular to understand that the government has to come up with the money to relocate them. And I see no, no real provision for that. I want them to know that the bypass road, which would enhance the lives and livelihood of the people throughout that constituency is not provided for in this. And Mr. Speaker, lastly, I listen with interest to the Honorable Minister of Finance in dealing with geothermal energy, stating that pretty soon we'll have a switch from 80-20 as it is now, with carbon to renewable, to the reverse. 80% would be from reverse. I want to tell the people of West Kingston, in particular the people of Flomans Bay, he seemed to be suggesting that we could, we could build a, a hotel at the site in Lomans Bay, since we wouldn't need that massive storage facility, if what he is suggesting is correct. The Lomans Bay is a beautiful bay, which was polluted by that project. There's very few places left for that kind of development so close to town. And I, I, it's interesting, you can design around those tanks different kinds of um, facilities. <laughs> Being a little facetious, Mrs. 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 Speaker, but just to say, just a little bit. <laughs> but just to say, Mr. Speaker, it, no, it speaks to the necessity for careful planning. You know, when we invest in those kind of you gotta wrap it up, capital projects, Honorable Member. we must take cognizance of the changing trends. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.